Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Crime with Wine. My name is Tamara and I bring to you both solved and unsolved crimes that took place right here in the Caribbean. So if crime and mystery is what you're into, then you're definitely in the right place. So go ahead, please like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss when I upload a new video. Now, that's out of the way. Let's hop straight into this case. It's going to take us to Guyana. And it's just a sad case. It's just a sad, sad story. Let's hop over to Guyana where we will dive into this case of Vanessa Narandat. Born in Venezuela to Guyanese parents, Devika Vanessa Narandat lived in Guyana. And according to her Facebook page, she loved educated documentaries, she loved music, she loved dancing, anything that had to do with entertainment, she was all about that. She loved it. She was described as very pretty, as you can see, and kind, quiet, and humble. She had a very hard life growing up as her father was an alcoholic, an alcoholic. As her father was an alcoholic and her mother, she had a complicated health issues. What we in the Caribbean, we will say she sickly, very sickly. And so Vanessa was living with her grandmother when she met Saraj Radish Varasami. I hope I said that correctly, I'm not butchering the names today. Uh, so 30 years old, Saraj was a very troubled man. He was constantly in and out of the prison. Actually, when he met Vanessa, Varasami, he was just fresh out of prison. And he was abusing illegal substances. He was taken out of school at a young age and started stealing and committing petty crimes. And so his mom was forced to put him out of the house in 2010. Even though they put him out of the house for stealing, he would still break into the house and steal things when they were not at home. So he had a very rough relationship with his family members. But one day in November 2019, he went to his family and he introduced them to Vanessa. He told them that he was a changed man. He found the love of his life. He was different and he wanted to do a total 360. He was not going to live the life that he was living anymore in and out of prison, a criminal. He was not about that life anymore. He wanted to live a totally different life with the love that he has found with Vanessa. And so they decided to move in together and start this new life. Despite his troubled past and the troubles that he had with his family, they decided that they're going to give him a chance and just see what would happen. Maybe he found this girl and she would influence him to be a changed man. So him and Vanessa, they moved to Belvedere, East Bernice, current time. Again, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm not butchering these names. Yeah, so they lived together and their life together was not even close to the one that they had hoped for they had arguments constantly and fights constantly they were just not able to live together and be happy but i am I'm, I'm thinking that it's normal for couples who just move in together they've never lived together before it's normal for a little fighting and arguing to be in between as they adjust to new life, living with a new person, new habits, new routines. Neighbors would hear them argue and everybody would mind their business. Everybody would just go about their day until one day, this man, he was walking about and this strong foul smell just hit him like a ton of bricks. He was like, what the hell smell like that? It was unbelievable. He could not ignore it. So he decided to investigate and check to see what was smelling like that, where the smell was coming from. And it led him to the barrel, a blue plastic barrel that was at the side of the road. In the barrel, he found the body of an already decomposing woman. Head first, feet sticking out, 
in the barrel. Police were called and an investigation began first to find out who this woman was that was in the barrel. It was later revealed that that was the body of 24-year-old Vanessa Narandat. Now, what was Vanessa doing in the barrel? Who wanted Vanessa dead and why was she there? Investigators began questioning neighbors. They began asking questions and neighbors told them that they heard Vanessa and Saraj arguing about around midday or so. They were arguing, loud arguing, and suddenly it was total silence. The arguing was finished and nothing after that. They didn't see her after that. With this information now, it just made sense that the next person police had to question and wanted to get information from was Saraj, who is Vanessa's living boyfriend. So they went on the search for, for, for um, Saraj and he was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, all this is happening. Saraj went to his workplace where he worked at a chicken outlet asking for money and he said that he was about to leave town he was leaving for the number 63 village and he just wanted some money to get out of there he did not tell them why why he was leaving and what was the cause for this abrupt move well eventually police found him under a bridge and they questioned him about his girlfriend's death he denied having anything to do with vanessa's death like he did not know anything he was clueless as to where his girlfriend was what happened to her who did it and police big police still they questioned him they kept asking him questions they kept drilling him to find out what exactly do you know then is when he said well i went home and i met her hanging really like he said that vanessa committed suicide no, you go home and you meet your girlfriend there. She committed suicide. What are you supposed to do? Run away? He didn't help her. He didn't take her down. He didn't call an ambulance. He didn't call the police. Nothing. He just left and left her there. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. So police kept on questioning him, drilling him. They wanted information. Even if she committed suicide, how did she end up in the barrel on the side of the road? Who put her there and eventually he decided to tell them the truth which he said that on april 9th he and vanessa had one of their many arguments that they would normally have since they've been living together but this time it was a little different because vanessa decided that she was out of the relationship and she was done she was threatening to leave she didn't want to do it anymore he hearing this, he decided that he was going to hang himself. He did not want to continue with life and she was going to leave. She didn't want, she didn't, he didn't want to continue life without Vanessa. And so he decided the best thing for him to do was to hang himself. I don't really think he was going to hang himself. I think he was doing that so Vanessa would feel guilty and change her mind about leaving. But... It wasn't working he was there in the process preparing to hang himself and Vanessa continued to threaten him to that she was leaving she continued to curse at him she continued just going off she was not she was not concerned about him hanging himself she probably thought he wasn't gonna do it either so he's up there trying to hang himself and she's down there going crazy he decided, nah, I'm not going to hang myself anymore. It would be better for me if I see her hang. So he came down, knocked her out in the back of her head, and took the sheets and hung Vanessa instead because she would not shut up. And he left her there, went out of the house for a few hours, I guess to clear his mind or to decide what he would do next. He came back home took down the body and threw her in the barrel, put the barrel outside in the streets like trash. The autopsy revealed that Vanessa died as a result of asphyxiation and blunt force trauma to the head. And Siraj was charged with her mother and remanded to prison. 
everybody was shocked about this case except one person sati Varasami, and that's the mother of Siraj. she said that she wished her son had killed himself instead of killing vanessa she met vanessa and she was very fond of her daughter-in-law she said vanessa was just quiet and because of vanessa she tolerated her son and so she would have preferred if her son had killed himself and not murdered innocent vanessa i mean some some might have agreed with her some may not some may have as usual so many questions run through my mind like did vanessa know about siraj past criminal history and if she did would she still have been in a relationship with him i'm also thinking was vanessa really really serious when she threatened to leave the relationship was she really going to leave or was she just saying that to get siraj attention or to make him feel guilty or to make him change maybe if she had made different choices maybe if she had just walked away from the relationship quietly and not threatened to leave but just leave maybe she would have still been alive and had a good life despite whatever challenges she may have faced before but yeah let me know what you think about this case in the comments below let's discuss it down there let me know what questions you have and yeah we'll talk about it in the comment section below that's it for this case and thank you for sticking around till the end see you in the next one bye